this hydrant with the five inch, a lot of times you're too close to the hydrant. So the five inch was just a nightmare. Right. So with this, you could just like, I don't even want to, if I'm near the hydrant, say I'm right on the hydrant and I pull right up on top of this, this stuff doesn't care. You can just run it all the way back and back around again. It doesn't care. Right. The five inch is like, it's a monster. Right. And, and I'm tripping over it all night. I was talking to uh, one of their chauffeurs before, um, young lady, she was awesome. On point with a lot of things she was hitting yeah, and on. She drives it a lot. Yeah. And she was talking about how she sights the hydrant when they arrive, if it's on the driver's side, or passenger side, they sight it on the A column of the engine yep. so that she then knows her distance of yep. stretching that 35 foot line out. Yep. Keeps you so. far enough away. But even if you had messed it up, yeah, right, all, right, it's, right, right. It's, it's very, uh, it's very forgiving. Yeah, with this, and we'll get a thousand GPM or more out of it. So there's very little friction loss. What you need, in yeah, a short for sure, like that. So, yeah, absolutely. So that's worked out good for us. Like I say, the, the whole stretching on this rig was primary. We didn't want people to have to climb up to do anything. Uh, another thing to point out with yeah, apparatus. Please. Apparatus today is higher than the old rigs. Right. These rigs are, uh, they got bigger wheels, they have stiffer springs, they set higher. Yep. So if we got to get up on a back step with a pack on, try to pull the hose off backwards, it's a nightmare. Right. The guy gets hurt before he even goes into a fire where maybe he's supposed to get hurt in the fire. He's not supposed to get hurt out here. We don't want him to get hurt anywhere. But the point is, why make this part harder? harder? I this agree. should be easy. Anybody's going to grab this over the end. And I think what's interesting, though, is when we get more suburban and rural, we're looking for water supply could be more limited. Yeah. So we're looking for a larger tank size. Typically, we want to be above 500, yeah. you know, and so on. But a lot of the trade off with a lot of the manufacturers is the larger the hose tank, the higher your hose bed. It's kind of the way it works, unless you kind of. Unless you're a magician like you are, and, and what you guys did here, because this. I'm telling you, this engine is impressive. At 750 gallons with the low hose bed that they have and the low profile and the short wheelbase, there's a lot in a small package on this thing. It's a lot and it handles real good. Yeah. I mean, it's got a, like a 44, 45 degree cramp angle on those wheels. I saw him pull out of the, this pull thing, off the apron. He, I mean, this thing's tight. On a dime. This thing is tight. Yeah. Real tight turn. Uh, we Just look at the front bumper. Yeah, now, please. Now we did on the bumper. So. It's like trip over no, that's okay. So a couple things with the buffer we did. It's not, it's not necessarily unique, but we didn't put a well in here. Now, a lot of guys have a well, so they, right. they deploy holes. Well, a couple things. Without a well, allowed, it, allowed, it, allowed us to French in this hydrant, uh, this, uh, this uh, side. Right. So we keep this out of the way. It's plenty loud. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, I don't care about this. This, this. this is what gets people out of the way. This, <laughs> that's, the, that's the shock treatment. That, that. <laughs> what it gave us is, going back to our old history here we always had a 150 foot bed right because you look at all just look at across the street look at those houses are. that's typical that's typical housing stock around here right look at that the brown house how much holes you need to make that house correct i can make that with 50 foot's gonna get I, you i can to make it with 100 foot yeah. so i pull up 50 and get the truck so he can get in a position right. i got plenty the next one the same thing next one the same thing that one the same thing that one the same thing all these places right this 200 foot was a myth it's a myth you don't need that much Yes, you can do it. Yes, you're gonna have a pile of holes all over the place. But this rig runs out two guys a lot of times. Right. If it runs out with two guys, two guys can make this happen. Absolutely. Two guys can make it happen, and it's a volunteer company. Right. So most of the time it rides out with four. As When it's four men, it logs in, and it'll run citywide. With under four men, that are four firefighters that are certified, then it can run in its own district. Right. Okay. Its own district. It could run. It could ride out driver only. Sure. Volunteer meets them. Two people on the rig. That's fine. Two people on the rig. This is cool. One guy. One guy brings it to the door. Driver flakes it all out. Gives him water. He's got a backup. It goes. It goes without saying that the design of this truck was built upon the region and the staffing. So important because too often I think we get mixed up in the process of building apparatus. We worry about a lot of the things that are superficial or secondary to the primary goal of building something that represents your territory. And with a, with a single man or a two man engine company, park, deploy, very simply. There's no climbing, there's no nope. nonsense. It's very straightforward. The, it's, only way it's these, well the only way these guys are gonna have to climb is if they have to operate the, uh, the deck gun, yeah. which we don't do very often. In fact, in my old job, I mean, if you told someone to use a deck gun, they would look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> but if you take a look at the deck gun, now I made that a tiller gun. So that's what's called a tiller type gun. It doesn't have any wheels on it. So if you wanted to, like say you wanted to knock down fire in the eaves of a building while you're stretching in, 
you have to have pinpoint accuracy. Right. Okay. So we got a shut off on it. Now that's a, that's a shut off made for a deck gun. All right. It's a jumbo shut off. You can actually take that. You can point it where you want it to go. The driver gives you water or you're the driver. You give yourself water. You get up there, you aim it where you want. You open it up and you have it pointed where you want. And you can work that surgically. We had a fire and uh, Dave, Dave jumped up on one of the city rigs. They had a fire in the house going good. Uh, it was the middle of a blizzard. Fire started in the back, went up, was in the eaves, was coming out of the eaves, and the deputy said, Dave, jump up on there and give it a shot. They had a, they had a frozen hydrant, delaying water. He just wanted to get the booster tank right. in there and just kind of like, kind of like reset this fire a little down. bit. Yeah. Calm it down. So he gets up there and he goes to operate the deck gun, and there's a lot, that, you know, because a lot of people take, have a demountable gun. I don't like demountable guns. Right. I don't like them at all. I've seen them pop off twice. They mm -hmm. weren't locked in. The demount demountable gun still has their elevation controls. So it was locked on them. So he ended up shooting the line. What the hell happened? He shot over the top of the house? Yeah, it was going over the roof until you're able to pull, the, pull that pin out. So it's just simple things. When you're designing right. a, a half a million dollar rig, go for the extra couple of grand and have a, a, dedicated. a, a dedicated gun. Right. We're going to put a, a demountable gun up in there anyway. And we already have a, a, a mercury nozzle on back. These are the things you think about. Right. It's, it doesn't make any sense. Our old rig had a demountable gun. We probably never used it at a fire that I could think of, but you could use it at a fire. Yeah. We have them in other units. I've seen two of them pop off accidentally. They weren't secured. They charged it and the thing went flying. Yeah. yeah. I do know too, you know, we've done a lot of content on shut offs for master streams up top, right? Yep. The deck gun, yep. you know, and so on. And what's important about that too, again, is when you go back to staffing, if you're running a two-man engine company and you do need to make that blitz, the nice thing is as the chauffeur is he can charge that gun and climb up on the two steps, yep. aim, and fire. If you're coming off with 750 out of the tank on this, you're not gonna waste that first 100 gallons of water in the in the aim. You're gonna use and take advantage of all that water you have in the tank yep. at, with perfect aim, first shot. So having that shut off is, in my world, I think it's critical. I think it's super smart, and I think more and more people are starting to do that. Yeah, it's actually like an old idea. I mean, the first time I yeah. personally saw it, I saw it was uh, uh, one of the engines in Harlem, 36 engine. They put a th they put a two and a half inch uh, shut off uh, on it, which was a good idea. It was a great idea, and it, I kept it in my memory right. bank. And right. I said, okay, when I get when, if I ever get to the point where I have to do something like that, I will remember it. And I did. I seen other guys use a single gate on it. Yes. Single gate is not a bad idea. Right. But both of those ideas have a little bit of a drawback. The single gate, you have to crank it open. Keep going. So you right. you you know you have a spray coming out of your nozzle for the first <laughs> ten seconds. This is like nice bail. I aim Pull it. Back. Open it, right. and that nozzle, we tested it, will not give you a water hammer like a regular shut off. Right. When you're putting out 600, 700 gallons a minute, when you go to shut that down, a lot of times a nozzle, a regular nozzle with a ball shut off, right. will snap shut because the water grabs it's it. It's too much, right. This won't do it, it's got, these, you know, this is a good, I don't, I don't sell fire equipment at all, but right. that's a TFT product. Uh, we'll climb up there, we'll grab some close-ups of it and yeah. so on. So that we can share that. It ended um, up being a good good thing for us to put in there. Yeah, good. I think the other thing too, which is cool, Seb, let's talk about this. And Chief, if you want to hop in on sure. this also, talking about the cross light, what they did also was they put an extra 50 down in the well yep. with the nozzle attached, yep. right? Yep. And the way they described it to me is very simply this. It's a 200 foot cross light. Yep. So if you need that extra 50, they take their tip off the nozzle. They can tie in with the extra 50 in the well and off they go, they get an extra 50 and they already have the nozzle attached. So all they do, open the bail on the first nozzle, comes out to the second 50 and then you open up and go to work. So if you come up a little bit short on that pre-connect, you add another 50. Sure, so call, we call it the folded 50. You gotta, folded give, 50. You gotta give stuff names. If you don't give it names. <laughs> so it's a folded 50, like a $50 bill. It's a folded 50, okay. So we got a, we got a fire in that house over there. We bring the line in, we get to the second floor. We're out of gas, we're out of hose. What do you do then? Right. Go get the folded 50. Somebody hustles it up, a smart chauffeur would have it laying on the front porch. It's right there, if you blow a lint, or you need 50 more feet to make the attic, no problem. We're out of gas, we're out of hose. Somebody shows up, I got the folded 50, take the tip off, now you got a nice line you can flake out, let's right. go put the attic Yeah. And how many guys have gotten the whole house knocked down and just can't close can't the make, deal? Yep. Can't close the freaking deal. And you guys all know- I know a lot of guys like that. It happens. So <laughs> it's there for a reason. I, yeah. Listen, I've been around a long time. I've seen it all happen. So I love it. when you're a little short or you need a line or you just can't get all that hose back up the stairway, don't sweat. Yeah.
We got a fold of 50. Yeah, it's a good touch. Yeah. Real good touch. So what else, Chief? Is there anything else on here you want to talk we about? Like the, we like the standpipe. Pull, yeah, uh, two up. inch? Yeah, it's two inch, uh, 75 footers. Uh, it runs with a, so, so we run a one inch, we run a one inch tip uh, inside the uh, shutoff and integral tip. So this is a, this is a one inch tip. So it's about 210 GPM. Uh, so it gives you the extra, for a commercial building or a uh, wind affected fire, it'll give you a, give you a little bit more water. Right. But I'll say you'll probably never take this seven eighths tip off. So this is the working tip. Most of the time at a residential high rise or any other building, this will actually do the job. If you did need more water, I mean, if you see it's like, this is gonna be a tough, Yep. job to push yeah let's go right and to take the another one yeah yeah and for it, sure and this holds handles it good uh 75 foot lengths two inch 75 two inch yep. uh a lot of guys are using 50 footers uh so you'd have to bring three four 50 footers we don't have the main power right it. but we team our engines up. city policy stanford city policy also new york city policy is on standpipe operation the first two and second two engines work in concert with each other yeah so they team up so Eight guys, I mean eight firefighters, should be able to get a line down the hole. Right. So that's that's yep. that's our thought. Yep. We, we got a standpipe bag to go with this, so yep. we have it, we they bring that up. And um, you know, we, smart things too, real quick, it's just even the diamond plate here, right? It's protecting the engine, it's coming off the lip and rolling down to the side so that as you deploy you're not dinging up the truck. It's those little things, those little details matter. And no tray. No tray, right. The guys who put a tray on it, they spend the grand for a tray, and then they fight, they argue for the next 10 years, why do we have to have this tray? Because I gotta get this thing <laughs> off. I go like, no tray, you don't need a tray, you need seat seatbelt. Right. Another thing, small points, but if they- Yeah, they're talk about it. So our standpipe straps, our Velcro, our engine straps, our seatbelt buckles. What I just did, when you have seatbelt buckles and seatbelt buckles, guess what, which is which? Right. If I pop the wrong bucket, I got a mess on my hands. I love that. So even little stuff, you know. No, but that it makes that is that is such a great little tip, and we'll shoot another video just on that alone because yeah. it's those little tips that matter, and a lot of it is tried and true. It's it's methodology. It's things you've learned over the years. Yeah. You have two seatbelts here. You're gonna, you're gonna push the wrong one. You're gonna push the wrong one, and your bundle's gonna come off, and it's gonna go spaghetti. Listen, we don't get our job because of multiple choice tests. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. you, you could get that 50% wrong, right. you have a mess every day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, even our ladder, we even did our ladder different. Our ladder does not have that that, that uh, knuckle breaker pull out thing. Yep. It's a seat belt. Yep. So it's a seat belt, it's a low ladder, it just comes right off. It's set up for a shoulder carry. Uh, we Our previous rig had the hydraulic lift. Right. It just, you know, you need a lot of room on the side. So if you squeeze this between two cars, you can just get this off on your shoulder and walk out with yeah. your lap. And Chief, the other thing I like about it too, is Seb, pan out and get it. They got the extension on the outside, the roof inside. Yeah, two roofs. Two roofs two inside. Roofs. Yeah, I didn't even notice that until yeah. right now, but two roofs. So the intent with that is we're always using the extension before we get to the roof, typically. Yeah. So why not put the extension on the outside? So often, guys are taking the roof off and setting it down and so they can get to the extension. step on it, hit right. you yeah, in the yeah, ankle. Yeah. Absolutely. All yeah. oh, that's happening. And Sebi, the other thing too on the camera, I just want to capture it, but look at the working height on this lift. Everything on this engine is manageable. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, you're looking now that departments are building three quarter high compartments, which will put your bundles up here, which puts your ladder up here. Yeah, so getting it's your ladder, no, no, getting your ladder, now you got to open a compartment, you got to step inside <laughs> the compartment. You, you know, you're, you're set up to fail. Right. Especially with a 45 minute cylinder on your back. It's easy for guys to get hurt. Yeah. We don't want guys getting hurt before they get in there. For they, sure. They get a little like banged that. up inside of a fire. We can understand that. That's what uh, one of your guys said before. So yeah, makes perfectly good sense. Yeah. But uh, great. We're going to come back. We're going to hit a couple more apparatus okay. details as we go. And yeah. uh, Chief, thank you very much Quite for welcome. that. Quite Appreciate welcome. the tour. Yeah.